That's a half gram of meth, yeah. I don't smoke crack, I shoot crack. Just got out to hospital actually yesterday. What was you in hospital over for? Xylazine, they call it going around my heart. Up. I got an irregular heartbeat now. Uh, so now I'm gonna be on a couple different medications for the rest of my life. I made a lot of money off Bitcoin, had a half a million dollar home in East Lansing. I actually lost it all a few years ago. Huh? Uh, just getting high. Detroit, Michigan. Renowned for its motor industry and a rich history of cultivating world-class music artists, harbors a lesser known and darker side. In America, overdose rates are reaching unprecedented levels with fentanyl emerging as the increasingly prevalent drug of choice. Shockingly, one in five houses in Detroit currently stands vacant and abandoned. Curious about the situation, I ventured into these forsaken homes to witness the impact firsthand. Join me in uncovering the real Detroit, where the glitz gives way to a stark reality. This is more than just a look at the decay structures, it's a glimpse into the lies behind them, revealing to a side of Detroit that's been kept in the shadows. How dangerous would you say Detroit is? Basically, there's a shooting every weekend. I don't have connections there. It's not what you want to be. Part of the Detroit culture, like in the slums, is racing cars. So in order to prevent that, they put huge speed bumps and then you'll see gaggles again. That's the stuff you gotta avoid. Just lock your door and keep going. I heard seven miles is really yeah, dangerous. Yeah, this seven mile right here, you see? So basically, they're all the drug infested houses in Detroit, man. It is raw. It's not good being here. All these yards, people are pretty much living in all of them. If you want to see this documentary, raw and uncut, and exclusive interviews, join my Patreon for a little as two ninety nine a month. This is my guy tattoo, man. Nice Where's your family at this moment in time? My daughter lives a half mile that way. My dad lives a half mile that way. Me and my kid just got into it like two months ago. So do you not speak to any of your family no more? No. And how much would you spend getting a daily? A couple years ago, two, three hundred a day. Now only like maybe thirty dollars if I'm lucky. And you sleep in here? Is this your living condition? No. My living condition is not much better than this, but at least it's clean. This is a condo compared to where he used to stand. Oh, really? Where yeah, you're I mean, it's here. Don't get me wrong, I got a nice little rug set up, barbecue. When so many people come through your spot and they don't give a f about you, they're going to steal and take what they want. What's an average day in your life? Yes. I'm going to ask you, dog. I've already walked like seven miles today. You walk seven miles? At least. I'm tired of everybody. I'm going to walk seven miles. I'm going to walk seven miles. My bad. <coughs> Bro, I really hope your situation changes, huh? You know, it is what it is. I made it this way. I can unmake it. That's all there really is to it. We're going to check out all the drug infested slums all around Detroit and speak to as many people as we can and see what it's like living here, man. I moved down here probably like six to eight years ago. I got in trouble with the courts and shit. They wanted to charge me a bunch of money and I didn't have it to pay it, so I moved back out here with my girl. We got into prostitution. She was prostituting, I was prostituting. How was you prostituting? The people you meet like this. Like you meet people and people like make you offers. Oh, women, like said, oh. women and guys. Oh, mate, you made that decision because that's not an easy decision to make. My girl was doing it. So How did you feel about that? When we first started, I wasn't like mad because all our friends were doing it. Just being around people that are prostituting 24 seven, eventually that's kind of what you end up doing too. She actually passed away like two years ago. Sorry to hear. Since then, I've been on my own. I tried to get on my feet a couple of times. When I got out of rehab, they wouldn't let me come back. I started using dope again because I couldn't get on my suboxone. I ended up right back out here homeless. My girl actually wrote all this. She just got locked up on Thursday. She wrote all that. See our names right there? Dove and Sarah. What did she get locked up for? Violation of family probation. She didn't report. I just got out. I just did eight months. I got out in June. What did you do eight months for? They tried to convict me on some robbery shit, but I beat it. I must life like living like this, bro. What do you mean living like this? How do you mean? Like, I guess, because this isn't isn't the normal way of living, I guess, like in a, in a house. No, my room's right there. I got a room and food and clothes and shit. 
I, I, I use, but I also s too, yeah. And how about is your addiction? I just started using about three years ago. I got put in a coma for three months. And I woke up. I was supposed to be on bed rest for a year. They had fire bomb my house, lacerated my kidneys, perforated my pancreas, ruptured my spleen, collapsed both my lungs, broke all eight ribs. I was f***ed up. Started using because of that. Where's your family, though? This is my family. I got them and I got my girl. Have you ended up, I guess, in this situation? Yes, my family was f***ing. Oh, not supportive. Just pushed me toward drugs. And how long have you been using? I don't know, like 18 years. 18 years? Yeah. Have you got any children? I have an 18-year-old son. So he's with his dad. Do you have any communication with them? No, not really. And what did you do before? Well, I was um, an assistant manager at Claire's at, at the mall. How did you go from that situation to this? Struggles with the daily life, you know. I like getting <laughs> I like getting <laughs> Yeah. How much does that cost for that, what you're doing? Ten dollars. It's like yeah, a half gram, probably. Yeah. Is that a lot? No, not at all. That's a half gram of yeah. 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 So what are you doing at the moment? You're trying to basically just find a vein? Yeah. Once you find a vein and that goes in, what, what feeling will you be feeling? You're going to get real hot in your chest, like a lot of energy. The average user that uses it every day stays up for anywhere from three to nine days at a time. I slept for one day in the last 11 days. That can't be healthy. I look healthy, don't I? Good chunk of time. I get like 36 hours of sleep in a month. I don't smoke crack. I shoot crack. I like to shoot mass. Most people smoke mass. Does that not hurt? Not really. You get used to it, I suppose. Yeah. Sometimes Experience changes look, perception. Last time I shot up, I stuck myself 73 times before I got a vein. Because your veins, the scar tissue gets so thick, and then the meth be tearing your veins up. So you can't get a vein. 73 times. It looked like I just committed a, a horrific murder. I was bloody everywhere. Are you friends because of meth? No. Bro, it's a community, really. Is this whole area just pretty much... Drugs? Yeah, yeah. This is the widest open-air drug market in Detroit. Is there much police around here at all? Yeah. I was just in a raid two weeks ago. They took our money, took our drugs, told us all get the out. And that's it? That's it. They come up in here, they find a bunch of dope. As long as they don't find guns, it's, it's straight. Called, it's called a green ticket. Like other places, you oh. get arrested and taken to jail and charged with that possession. Here, you still get charged with possession and all that stuff, but it's a ticket. That's my girl right there. there. Oh, you with it? No, I broke. Oh, oh, yeah. That's my girl. That's the one that's locked up. No. You would never think. No, you wouldn't. No. Well, I hope everyone's situation gets better, man. It was a pleasure to meet you all. Yep, you too. Maybe we're going to come out to London and film y'all. Yeah, come, bro. <laughs> How are you, bro? I'm doing all right. How you doing? Aaron. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Zach. What's your current situation at the moment? The past couple of months have been kind of rough. Just got off heroin. Congratulations, man. Thank you. And how have you ended up in the, in the situation you're in, Zach? Well, I was a pretty heavy heroin addict for a bit, but I was working constantly. Since my brother died, I think something's gone a little bit wrong in my head. How did he pass away? I'm sorry to hear he's passed away. He well. died from an overdose. It was intentional. Heart attack at 30. Then how did you get involved in that life? I started when I was 14 pills and shit like that, it's kind of gone from there. And do you reckon you could ever just go back home? No, no. My stepdad's not a fan of me. My mom would take me in, no problem. Why is he not a fan? Is there a reason for that? He's just an abusive person, so I kind of fought back. He'd hit us with the belt and shit like that across the face. Belt buckles, shit like that. If you could be doing anything job-wise, what would you like to be doing? I mean, if I were to completely achieve my goals, I'd be a chemist again. I was a street chemist, but I was going to school for chemistry. I wanted to go into an actual lab, pharmaceutical biochemistry. That's insane. Obviously in a good way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and do you enjoy living in Detroit? No, no. It's like a kid in a candy store. It's, it's not exactly a great place. You hear gunshots going off all the time. That's just kind of normal around here. What about ex-girlfriends? Have you had many relationships? I've had a few. I mean, they're good people and all. It's just I got too much shit going on myself. I can't involve myself with what they got going on. You gotta make it seem like ain't nobody here. That's how you get your money. Bulletproof glass. So when they come by, it's been shot up plenty of time. You know what I'm saying? You see this? Look. Chips. There's a lot of beef and competition. These guys burn these houses up. They burn their houses up. They eventually stuck with nothing. Check this out. All field. There's nowhere for the kids to play. Look, they build their own parks and shit like that.
Man, this owe me money, man. I ain't gonna get reckless with him because I got y'all with me, man. Hey, uh! Yeah, come here, He's trying to come to another hood. I'm like, I ain't gonna see you, man. Yeah, come on. Before you get f Huh? Man, you ain't been trying to catch me, nigga. You know where I'm been at, man. I seen you, Cookie, bro. You can't hide, bro. I need my money. Why you cut the car off, bro? I didn't cut nothing off. I didn't cut nothing off. I've been in the hospital. Bro, you've been out the hospital, bro. So that means you should have like 1400 on there then. Yeah. So that means you would have been came and seen me. You oh, playing with my intelligence, man. Shake, man. I don't give a fuck you out here. You ain't that sick, You playing with me, man, like I'm a kid or something. And you get over then. Yeah, bro, you playing too many games, man. I ain't never play a game. So why you ain't came down there and see me? You know exactly where I'm at. And be a pocket. Let me see. I have a car, yeah. So you ain't got no money, man. Why no. you playing, man? Why no. come on, man? Empty the pockets, bro. I ain't about to let that on my day, bro. I ain't, I ain't man. So I'm about to take y'all a little place. This is where they just sit and get high, you know what I mean? We're about to meet some addicts in Seven Mile. Let's see what they're saying. Just go. And I'm right back at it. You see where I'm at, you know what I mean? What you got to prison Put, for? Press pills, I'll send them. Press the Adderall and shit like that. I was getting them like thousands at a time, you know, off the dark web, 50 cents a pop. It's probably ain't nothing like you're used to over in London, huh? Like, we got guns everywhere. Can y'all even have guns and stuff over there? Nah. What's your situation? I'm homeless. I'm just working, I, but I, I don't steal enough, and I do work and housework and shit for people. Are you addicted at the moment? Yeah, I'm addicted to boy and girl. Well, it would be boy and girl, because in London, we, we wouldn't know what boy. Boy would be heroin, and girl would be cocaine. Do you see a way back, back to, I guess, normal society? This is normal for me, you know what I mean? When I go out, out there, it ain't the same, you know what I mean? Was doing real well for a long time. I relapsed about three months ago. Just got out to hospital actually yesterday. What was you in hospital before? Xylazine, they call it going around. <laughs> my heart up. I got an irregular heartbeat now. Uh, so now I'm going to be on a couple different medications for the rest of my life. So you shoot it up, a minute 30, you're out. And then you are going to sleep. What, why Hopefully they, you what, wake up. That should be killing people because it's in the heroin now. So to make you think that you got good shit and you just fall out. <laughs> death is no, pretty no, cheap. Yeah, death what, is ten, cheap. Ten bucks. Yeah, and your people just think you're nodded out or they'll start making a noise. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know to hit them with a fan. This is how you know we try to keep all our, our neighbors and shit safe. We got boxes in our can. These are in vending machines now for $50. $600 right there. <laughs> yeah, we, we try passing them out and make sure everybody's yeah. straight. Design like that. Narcan won't touch it. Yeah, you need like 10 of these. And you still need medical attention. Is that new then, Xylazine? Yeah, that just started happening. There's a certain boy I won't even touch. Like, I only go through a couple of people, like people that I trust. What I used to know and do as heroin doesn't exist any longer. Yeah, real doesn't heroin exist. don't exist no more. It's all off It don't home. exist, man. I had everything up until three months ago, man. Nice house. Nice cars. I got a female coming in my life. She was a little thief. She destroyed everything for me. Where's your family? My family's all in the south. My mom and sister, they're in South Carolina. I wish to God they would let me come down there and check. Start over. I got nobody else here, just me. This shit ain't for nobody, man. I ain't never been in this position my whole life. I've always been on top of it. And how long have you lived here? I ain't living anywhere. Recently, I just got my car taken with everything I own. And girl. Driving the car, had guns in the car. I'm going to treatment in a couple of days. Life's gonna be different again, buddy. Bro, and I hope your situation changes, man. I hope so too. It's got to. I'm gonna die. Die out here. Thank you both for your time, man. Yo, nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Hey, what's the benefit of doing that? That's Dolphin Swag. <laughs> What's it like being here? It's difficult, but it's better than being outside. You make home where you where you go. And have you ended up here before? <laughs> Bouncing from place to place. My family. It's difficult to help when the person wants to be where he is. I don't want to torture them. I ain't gonna lie to myself either. And until I'm ready, 
exactly. And I'm just going to be here and make the most of it. Okay, assume obviously you lived a normal life initially. Then how did you go from that to this? Relationship issues. I was engaged and married. What happened? Looking for a working girl because I wasn't getting it at home for a minute. One thing led to another. Tell me, bro. So that, that sounds crazy. It sounds crazy, but it happens more often than people think. So you went to see a working girl, mm -hmm. and then what happened? And she was. We call it apparatus. <laughs> I'm like, I wanted to try it. She told me no like four times, but I thought I was different than everybody else, but I ain't no different. And that changed everything. Mm hmm. Everything. position right now but, but good people looked out for me man plenty of time how have you ended up in the situation that you're in my parents was addicts what age was you did you get addicted i started smoking crack at 15. i swear i'd never do heroin you know we all do that though why at the age of 15 did you start smoking crack it was just always around it's just it was the life where are your parents now my mom she likes to do an right. she's got a boyfriend um, my dad's in prison what for um manufacturing and delivering methamphetamines allegedly <laughs> Do you see a way at your situation, Breeze? Of course, I just kind of really want it. Would you say you don't want it at the moment? No, not really. What's an average day in your life at the moment? I've mean, got, yeah, you know, sugar daddies, I guess I'd say, that take care of me and stuff, you know? Sugar daddies? Yeah, an average day for me is, you know, wake up, sit, get right, go out and get some money. How would you make money? I go out on dates. I'm not like all these girls out here. I don't walk the street. I don't think I'm better than them in any way, shape, or form, because we all do the same shit, but... You know, I don't really walk the streets, I got my phone and, you know, I'll call some of my guys, they'll cash at me money or, you know, come pick me up, we'll go get breakfast. And how much would you charge, if you don't mind me asking? I don't do anything under 100, but sometimes 60, 80 bucks, but, you know, a lot of these girls out here, they're doing shit, 10, 20 dollars. <laughs> He loves me, he never wanted to see me like this. He had a problem too though. His problem was mad, it wasn't always like this. And he had a business, he had his own roofing company, but he was taking Adderall real bad at the time. You know, and Adderall's expensive, and that's how a lot of these people out here started. It's prescription pills, whether it's narcos, pain pills that lead you to heroin, or Adderall that leads you to coke and meth, you know? We all find our way, I guess. Really? someone could help you, how can I help you? I recently actually just tried to get clean. I got arrested and they sent me to rehab and I burned a lot of my bridges. The biggest problem, like why I couldn't stick it out this time is I had no support system. I've got siblings that are doing well, but they got their own lives going on and everything. You know, if I could have had somebody just like to talk to and to be real to. Because in the rehab, if I, if I said like, hey, I want to use today, I would risk them sending me back to jail. So I felt like I couldn't be real, you know. I hope your situation changes, man. And I, I, I really wish you all the best. Thank you. It will. I think could be like this forever. I was actually dealing with stuff. I was a vendor on the dark web, manufacturing Xanax. Uh, allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah, I made a lot of money off Bitcoin. Had a half a million dollar home in East Lansing. Actually lost it all a few years ago. Half? Uh, just getting high. Started partying up like with like lean, Percocet, Xanax, got too expensive. You see, you're at the situation, you must have some it's about you if, you if you made that kind of money. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've made it out. I've quit before and got, got in the house and started doing good again, and then I relapsed. Where's your family? My mom lives in Livonia, so does my dad. They're divorced. I got a brother that lives in Southfield. He's doing really good. Where do you reckon you'll be in the next five years? Back in a nice house, making money. Mm -hmm. 